Football Convo's number 10, Colin Kelly of Overtime Ireland. The most important thing is to make sure that you have fun at it. I think if you're not having fun at it, you're not going to enjoy it, then you're not going to keep trying to put in the effort. For conversations with the players, coaches and contributors that make this game great. Regulators, mount up, we're coming. Football Convo's. Here's your host, Andy Carlson. I'm very pleased to be joined now on Football Convos by Colm Kelly. He's on the Twitter machine, at the Colm Kelly, C-O-L-M. How are you today, sir? Uh, doing very good. Uh, thanks for having me on the podcast. Hey, all good. And he is part of the Overtime Ireland football podcast. That's on Twitter, at Overtime Ireland, all one word. Uh, it is in from Donegal, Ireland. Did I get yeah, that right? Don- Donegal, up in the, up in the northwest of the country of Ireland, small country here compared to, you know, it's probably about the size of one of the states, uh, some of the smaller states in America, but, uh, you know, the the game is, I'm sure you know, is growing dramatically here with the, mm-hmm. the Wembley games and everything. We're not actually in the UK, but we're very close to it, so we've kind of been roped into that NFL UK kind of uh, group. I don't know, I was about to say franchise, but maybe in a few years' time. Uh, yeah, uh, OTI is an NFL podcast with a distinct Irish twist uh, hosted by the Brothers Colm uh, and DJ. And, Colm, I want to have you on to uh, get your story, especially football-wise. I'm sure it's very unique. Uh, you already started to allude to it, uh, being over in Ireland. Now, how did uh, the game of American football start with you? Well, uh, first off, you know, I just started watching the game, and uh, Sky Sports is part of the NFL UK group. They are the kind of, the, we'll call them the, the biggest kind of like the NFL Network over here, or mm-hmm. some of the, maybe Fox or something, and they are the biggest over here for covering all sports, soccer, cricket. You know, they're, they're covering basketball now from the NBA, and they, they're obviously covering the NFL as well. They started off, uh, you know, in the last 15 years showing the games, but like everything you see with the growth of NFL UK's kind of vision for the NFL with the games at Wembley, it's growing year on year, and uh, with the coverage as well has grown, so... You know, with the time difference, you know, we were just setting up here before we started talking and <laughs> some some issues with the time differences. But when we're watching the games here, obviously, you use, uh, say, Eastern time, watching the games at 1 o'clock and then the, the later game as well, which will be kicking off here at 6 p.m. So we could get those first two Sunday games, but there's a great range of uh, content on Sky Sports. So it, it just grew. And with my interest in the game, the, the coverage started to grow as well. So there's just more and more to watch. And, you know, obviously, then Red Zone came in, which is shown here every week as well, which is fantastic. And uh, just as my interest grew in the game, started off watching the games, didn't really have a team to, to root for. And mm-hmm. as I went forward, I'm a, I'm a Packers fan, for anyone that might have heard the podcast before, but uh, I'm kind of a, a Packers fan. Uh, there's not many of them in Ireland, but, uh, you know, they, they've uh, a storied franchise and lots of history. But you mentioned there Donegal, and uh, there's a sport, I don't know if any of your listeners have ever heard of it, called uh, Gaelic football. And it's kind of like, I don't know, a mixture between maybe rugby and American football, we'll call mm-hmm. it. And uh, you play the game with your hands, but there's lots of other skills in it as well. But it's quite hard hitting. And Donegal, uh, the the county that I'm from, which maybe you call the state if you're in America, it's a lot smaller than the state. But they are uh, they wear green and gold, and then the Packers wear green and gold. Uh, as a soccer fan, I'm an Arsenal fan. There's kind of mm-hmm. a link between the way that the clubs are run. The Stan Kroenke owns the, the St. Louis Rams now owns Arsenal Football Club but up, mm-hmm. up until he took over they were one of the last uh, maybe we'll call it a franchise in the Premier League that was owned uh, by the fans rather than by by one majority owner and the Packers as we know are the, the only team in the National Football League to really be owned by the fans and not have one majority shareholder in the, in the organisation so I became a, a Packers fan and just um, like anything with me, I suppose I start off, I have a, a small interest in something that grows to a bigger interest and mm. nearly at this stage, uh, you nearly become addicted to it. So started off just watching games weekly with a passing interest, then you get a team to root for, you start to watch all the games and as it's growing uh, and you're not living in, say, the state of Wisconsin that following the team, you start to pick up everything from every team and now is, uh, I have a website and a podcast as well going on all things American football. So it just grows and grows and grows. And I, I listened to one of your previous podcasts and you are on Ross Tucker, who has been a guest on our show a number of times. And he always talks about the football sickness and uh, he says that he thinks <laughs> that we definitely have it over here in Ireland and the UK. Because, you know, it's like anything when it's kind of maybe not just there and so easily accessible at the start. You kind of have to dig deeper. And when you're looking for more and more information and content, you just... You start with things like podcasts and that, and you start to learn more about it, and eventually you, you just want as much as you can, and with especially the podcast format, which 
you know, that's why I like it so much. You could get that information when we're over in Ireland. There was no, you know, having to stay up as late on midweek to, to get information on the NFL. Mm-hmm. You could just get the, the podcast, download it, and listen to it whenever whenever worked best for you. Now, that's an interesting take about how you came to be a Packers fan. And I, I'm actually a, a Vikings fan, so uh, I'm sure we'll have a little <laughs> bit of, of fun back and forth in this. Now, have yeah. you ever been to Wisconsin? I've never been to Wisconsin, but uh, I was out last year in New York, and unfortunately for me, uh, the first game I ever got to see the, the Packers playing in was uh, a loss to the New York Giants, and Aaron Rodgers, as we all know, last year uh, had mm-hmm. a, a collarbone injury, and I got to see Scott Tolzien play under centre in that one, and uh, uh, it wasn't a very entertaining affair from a Packers point of view. He kept the game close, but did lose. Uh, did hey, lose hey Scott Tolzien on. is easily the best third-string quarterback in the league. Yeah, well, uh, hopefully with Aaron Rodgers, uh, him maybe stays third string for another another ten or fifteen years. All right, now, what was your emotions going through the NFC title game, watching the Packers just kind of give that game away, and having so many plays that could have gone the Packers' way, and just one of them had gone the way they would be in the Super Bowl this week? Yeah, uh, I was trying to put that to the back of my mind over the last say six six or seven days, but. Thanks for bringing that up nice and early. Uh, and no problem. Get, getting the salt in the wound early. <laughs> yeah, we, we get the, the whole uh, Vikings fandom coming out there now trying to get one at the Packers fan. But, uh, you know, I've listened to a lot of other, you know, I mentioned I'm a big podcast fan, and that's mm-hmm. why I got into doing podcasting. And uh, I've listened to a lot of different uh, Packers podcasts as well as kind of more neutral podcasts over the last few weeks, and I've been nearly using it as a, a therapy session to get over it. And, <laughs> you know, uh, it was a game that obviously playing the Seattle Seahawks, you never think it's over, but I did think after that there, uh, pick, um, when, when Julius Peppers gave the slide down signal, I think it was Morgan Burnett that uh, got that pick, and he goes down, and I, I thought at that stage the game was over, like they were, they were still a two point or a two score lead at that stage. And Why, why like, did he go down? Well, why well, did Peppers tell him to go down? There's think, so much time left. Yeah. I think it's we have to ask Julius Peppers that question because if, <laughs> I think if Peppers doesn't give that signal, he doesn't go down. And you know, Peppers, you know, a lot has been made of him coming in this year, being a captain on the team after coming over from the Chicago Bears. He's he's been a big, big influence in the in the locker room in particular. And you know, I guess you know he's a veteran of the game. And when a, a player like that maybe gives you the signal, you go down. But I, I've heard a lot of people saying that maybe if they were in that position, they would have took the chance of running it down the field and de- dealt with Judas Peppers later on. But, mm-hmm. you know, when you when you have that two-score lead, you have Aaron Rodgers as your quarterback, you think, you know, just give the ball back to the offense. And unfortunately, it didn't work out. But as you mentioned, there were so many things in the game. People talk about the, the onside kick, you know, and Brandon Bostic not recovering it. And Poor he Brandon shouldn't Bostic. go in for the ball. So, yeah, but you know, there, there, there's so much, uh, there's so much stuff that went on outside of that that led to it. It's just, it was just like a, a snowball. You know, starts going down the hill and going mm-hmm. down and gathering up more and more. Like you can look at the two point conversion. I don't know what happened. Ha ha, Clinton Dix there. That, that was phenomenal. a two yard hail mary. Yeah, like it looks. If you watch the replay, mm-hmm. Wilson is definitely he, he's about half a second away from getting sacked, and he just tossed that one up as you mentioned, a hail mary. And I, I thought it. Clinton Dix should have made the play on it, but you can't really get criticised in him either. He had two interceptions in the game, he nearly had another one. Was, I would say it was his breakout game, you know, in his rookie season, and such a big occasion for him to step up. And there was there were so many things that went right for them at the start too. They should have went for it in one of those two fourth downs. You can say that now after the game, but, you know, they didn't go for it. They took the field goal. They got a, a recovery then of that uh, kick return. They got another field goal. One of them, if they'd have made, a, made it into a touchdown, you know, it might have been different. But mm. 16-0 up at the half, and uh, things were looking good. And then, as I mentioned, that there, I thought I hadn't went to Twitter the whole game long, up until that interception. And uh, I tweeted out then uh, a comment about the Seahawks. I was asking, did they have a 13th man? And obviously they had a 13th man somewhere because after that there, they, they came back. And as we all know now, they're going to the Super Bowl, not the Packers. But wait, wait, so are you saying that the Seahawks' comeback was all because... You made a snarky comment on Twitter. Pack- mm, Packers well, fans need to know that this. That is the way uh, football fans seem to seem to think of these things. But uh, I don't think what Russell Wilson certainly thought there was a thirteenth man at work in mm. it. And uh, Aaron Rodgers made the comment during the week that he doesn't know if uh, the big man upstairs watches a lot of American football or if he's a big fan. But well, Wilson certainly seemed to think so. But you know, it was uh, it's a definitely a tough one to swallow. It's the the toughest loss. Uh, I mentioned earlier, I'm an Arsenal supporter. They've had some tough losses over the year, but I think uh, since becoming any sort of sports fan, it's the the toughest loss that I've had to take. And it was very tough dealing with it over the last week, but uh, things are starting to come around. I don't know. I'm not really looking forward to the Super Bowl yet, but I'm sure by the time it comes around, I'll I'll be looking forward to watching it. And you mentioned my brother, who's the co-host on the podcast, DJ. Uh, he's a big New England Patriots fan, so we we had talked all season about the dream uh, Super Bowl matchup, and we were. Two minutes away from getting it, but you're very and the, close. And the Packers put on a stinker for the for the very end. 
All right, so uh, enough about rubbing salt in, in your wound. Even though as a Vikings fan, uh, all week this has been like cathartic as – a lot of people said this has been a top five Vikings moment, even though the Vikings weren't even involved, just to see your yeah. your biggest rival wither and die. But uh, going going back to you, uh, and not to uh, you know, gloat any further, uh, <laughs> the the picture you sent us for uh, the website uh, for the post is yeah. you were in San Diego for a Seahawks Chargers game. Uh, how'd you end up there? Yeah, well, I uh, was on vacation with uh, my girlfriend, and um, we happened to be going to San Diego. It wasn't planned for that game, but you know, once we decided we we're going to San Diego, I thought I'll check up what games are on. It happened to be the the Seahawks were coming to San Diego, so I uh, contacted the the Chargers through a, a, a contact I have for the podcast, and uh, you know, they, they set me up with some great tickets for it. So mm-hmm. I got tickets to the game. It was a very very good game because the, obviously the, it was so early in the season. We know that the Chargers had a great start to the year, and that was one of the kind of they didn't have a great start actually because they lost to the Cardinals in the first game, but this was the second game of the season and it was a, just a big, big game with the Super Bowl champions coming down. But uh, it was a game I really, I really enjoyed. There was great atmosphere at it, but you know, uh, maybe I would have rather if the Seahawks had won that one and, and lost last weekend. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Minor details. Yeah. All right. So, what was the genesis of Overtime Island? Where, where did it all start with you and your brother? Yeah. Well, both of us big uh, football fans. As I mentioned, he's a he's a Patriots fan and. You know, it's easy being a Patriots fan. I suppose people say it's easy being a Packers fan too, but uh, the Patriots have been on quite a roll over the last, you know, 10 or 12 years, as I'm sure we'll talk about if we talk about the, the Super Bowl. But he, he follows them. I follow the uh, the Green Bay Packers. And just, as I mentioned, the game's grown over here. We thought that I'm a big a big podcast fan, as I mentioned. You had on Ross Tucker. He was one of the, when he was at ESPN, I was listening to the, the Football Today podcast when he was with it. And it used to be kind of, it was five days a week during the season. So I, I used to download it every day. I used to get your fix of football information from it and uh, because there wasn't as much coverage here there is bits and pieces now obviously i have a game pass here for the for the nfl network so you can get the nfl network and everything here now all the time but starting out it was a, a free way to to get more information and true listening to that true listening to other podcasts i just thought you know there's a lot of a lot of talk about nfl uk and the game growing over here but there was nobody well there's a lot of people over here a couple of big other podcasts talking about it as well but i thought like why not give it a shot and see what it's like and we started off just me and him talking about games and talking about what was going on in the league we could try and cover the league from all perspectives including our teams but try to get a bit for everybody in there and then it grew to we're having on guests and i mentioned ross tucker we've had on a number of current players and past players we had on calais campbell this year we had on delaney walker we've had on guys like harry carlson who's in the hall of fame and mm-hmm. just building up guests over time and it just got you know it was something we were enjoying so we kept it going then we had the the website obviously just for kind of plugging the podcast and then uh, over the last season, we've been going now for just over two and a half years, and mm-hmm. the season before, uh, we started getting some guys writing on the website, so there's there's writing and different articles going up there now. But yeah, you guys got like an ar- army of writers on there now. Yeah, at the start of the season, we had uh, 20 guys writing, and then as the season goes on, obviously some of the guys are in the UK, and the, you know their team's maybe not going well. Maybe they start off, and the team's you know 0-6 or something, and they're not as interested in writing about the game. But there's a lot of guys there. There's two guys in particular that write two articles a week, and uh, you know you can see even just from their point of view that their writing increases each and every week is uh, you know the the quality of it. And hopefully there's a few guys who have gone on to to write for some uh, bigger websites, the Bleacher Report and some stuff like that. So mm-hmm. there is, there's a lot of people over here that are interested in the game, and it's just I thought about you know you give other people a kind of a where we have a voice to talk on the podcast but you give them kind of a, a voice through that people can read their their content mm-hmm. and, and information as they, as they try and progress their writing abilities and so on yeah it's very very good the the sum of the the whole is bigger than the sum of the parts or whatever yeah. the cliche is <laughs> and it's a, it's like you, you said how to start up but just that is a hobby like uh, i have a job my brother is uh, doing a qualification to become a, a teacher, a science teacher. So we're just uh, doing it as a hobby during the season with two shows a week. We're going to have two shows this week again. Ooh, and then... Now, a, a Patriots fan and a science teacher, maybe he can explain what happened <laughs> with the deflation yeah. and Belichick. That, did you watch that press conference on Saturday at all? Yeah, I did watch it. And I watched uh, Tom Brady's as well. And, mm. You know, as much as Patriots fans might want everyone to believe that they're telling the truth. It's very hard to, you know, Tom Brady's a, a quarterback in the NFL. He's been a, a quarterback all his life, basically, since mm-hmm. his high school days, all the way up. And, you know, if you if you grip a football, I have a football that I was holding during that Packers game last week, and I could feel as the game was going on, going on I, I can feel like it's a bit softer because you're squeezing it so hard. But, you know, I, I think if I was a quarterback and it was my job to throw spirals to, to your teammate to try and win matches, I think I would know when the, when the ball's uh, definitely a bit softer. Would you think you would know? 
Uh, probably if you <laughs> hand, handle it for a living. But uh, I feel like it's one of those rules where everyone is breaking it in some shape or form. Yeah. Like Aaron Rodgers saying that he likes his yeah, towards the hard. upper end of the inflated. And I'm sure – Every single quarterback and every single equipment guy has a sort of wink nod uh, arrangement to have the balls where they like it. Uh, I still don't understand why the NFL had to set up like a sting op- operation, basically to catch the Patriots in a line instead of just telling them to knock it off uh, before the, the the game before the biggest game of the season. But yeah. uh, I don't know. Oh, I don't know about over there. I, I know that you're really into podcasts, but here sports radio has been kind of unlistenable for the past week because. They haven't been talking at all about the Super Bowl. That that might yeah, change that, a little bit this week. It's all been all this stupid deflate gate thing. But uh, anyways, well, I, I don't think it was that big of an advantage. But it, it's the Patriots, so they're obviously going to get extra shade because of it. Yeah, I don't think it, I don't think it mattered to the overall game, and I do think everyone is fed up about talking about. It. I think the Patriots win that game anyway. But it's like anything you can tell me anything about the game, but everyone takes every advantage to try and win the game, whether it's. You know, when they were talking about the, the offensive lineman play that the Patriots ran against the mm-hmm. Ravens, it wasn't a, it wasn't an illegal play, but a lot of people are talking about it that way, and then they're talking about this being illegal. Technically, it's not illegal either way, and, the, you know, the fine, usually, you know, there's not a big fine for it or anything like that. They're just not bending the rules, but they're taking advantage of some loopholes, and nobody's better than Bill Belichick at taking advantage of it. But, mm-hmm. you know, the, I, I read that Andy Dalton likes to have the balls warmed before he goes and plays, and... He he still throws into a lot of interceptions during the season, so maybe it's not an advantage. But you know, I, I I don't really know what way to take it. You know, people are calling for the Patriots to be taken out of the Super Bowl, and all we all know that's not going to happen. But there's a lot of things coming out about it. But at the end of it, you know, it, it just comes down to things like Spygate, and there's a bit of a history there with Belichick getting caught for a couple of things. So I think that's more the reason. And I think if you know, if this had been maybe the Redskins or even the Oakland Raiders or a team like that there, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I don't think there's as big a deal being made of it, and I think it's just because it's... You know, I, I was surprised at how much was made of it. Some of the big news stations over there, Fox News and all, were showing it as well. And Once mm-hmm. it gets into mainstream, that's the problem the NFL has, and it's been a tough season for the NFL in particular with Ray Rice and Adrian Peterson, you know, as a, as a Vikings fan, you'll know all about that. But just with all the bad things that happened this year, this is just, I'm sure, going into Super Bowl week, they were hoping to have a, a week, you know, that they didn't have to answer all these questions, but... Unfortunately, with the media surrounding the game this week, there's going to be a lot of questions about it. Yeah, the story actually led the the nightly news, uh, the 6 p.m. news is a big deal over here, on uh, ABC, NBC, yeah. and CBS. It was the lead story. So that it seems it crazy about it. how big the NFL is, but also it, it might be because of this dead, dead week before the Super Bowl. I don't know. Yeah, the bye week as well, obviously. Uh, you know, usually the week before the Super Bowl, you do get some... There'll be a story leaked or something that you know gives the NFL a bit of a bad reputation or something. But uh, you know, uh, hopefully now from today onwards, it'll be all talk about the Super Bowl and we'll forget we'll forget yeah. about it. But I don't think it's going to be forgotten about. It. I do think there will be a punishment handed down. And you know, Tom Brady said he hasn't talked to anyone about the investigation. Well, you know, certainly you should be talking to the man that's throwing the ball. And the, the I'm not going to call him a suspect, but I'm sure if uh, the balls were deflated, he had some prior knowledge about it. But I think uh, after the Super Bowl we'll see something happening, but uh, I'm just not 100% sure as to what the correct punishment for it's going to be because if they win the Super Bowl, I'm sure that you know if Tom Brady gets fined 50 or $100,000, I don't think he's going to care all that much. But you know when you see things like uh, Marshawn Lynch was threatened last week to be ejected from the, the Packers game, if he wore those pictures going around before the game of the gold cleats, if he wasn't wearing the proper uniform cleats, that he was going to get ejected from the game and then... You know, this here is it's hard to vary the punishments that the NFL gives out, so it is it's a hard one to judge at the minute. All right, speaking of moving on, let's talk to the about the actual game. Who do you think is going to win the Sunday? Well, at the minute, you know, obviously still hurting from the loss last week. I think if the if the Seahawks go and play like they did against the Packers, I think the Patriots, which I mentioned on our podcast last week, the thing about the Patriots is when they were playing the the Colts there and they had the lead. There was one time in the second half, I think they had maybe a, a fourteen point lead or something, and they they had a I think it was a fourth and two, and they went for it on it, and they, they converted. Like, but the game the game was starting to get out of hand already. But the, he just shows how Bill Belichick, if he gets you down, he'll put his foot on your basically on your throat and finish the job. Whereas when the Packers were going, they just seemed happy to try and run the clock out. You won't get that with the Patriots. So I think if the if the Seahawks make the mistakes they did that they did against the Packers, I think the the Patriots will take advantage. But I can't see the, the them playing as poorly again. I think that the Packers had a good game plan, but. It's, it's going to be interesting to see, you know, Russell Wilson wasn't that effective out of the pocket early in the game, really up until that fourth quarter because Clay Matthews was spying on him throughout the game. So 
if they can stop Wilson, I know they got the touchdown off a deep pass, but if you can keep him in the pocket, it wasn't going all that well for him, you know, with the four interceptions early in the game. So I think they're going to try and take away Marshawn Lynch, and uh, it's easier said than done. But if I was going now to call it, I think the key matchup is uh, how, how the Seahawks' defense gets on with Rob Gronkowski, and they've done well against tight ends all year. But, you know, Gronk hasn't been with the Patriots for these last two playoff runs, and I think he is a, a major, major advantage. I think, you know, by the time he finishes his career, I think he'll go down as the best tight end in NFL history, and he is, he's, he's really, really he's tough to stop. So I, I can see that being the, the key issue for them. And, you know, we've seen LeGarrette Blunt. You know, people were talking about Marshawn Lynch, and he, he was superb in that last quarter against the Packers, and he's been very, very good all season. But LeGarrette Blunt was running, and he had a different bit of a... I don't know, he had a different bit of a wiggle to him against the, the Colts, whether that was down to the Colts' defense or down to LeGarrette Blunt. You know, he's had, a, he's had a few big games. I've seen the top 10 uh, rushing games of the of the 2000s, and I think Lynch is four of them. And, but LeGarrette Blunt is two of them now for the, the most rushing yards in the playoffs since the 2000s. So, you know, it'll be interesting whether they go, both teams go with the running game or whether they try and put the ball in the quarterback's hands a little bit more. You have Sherman a little bit banged up and... You know, it's just Earl Thomas, you know, there's word, of, there's word of his injury. So I think it's going to be a tough one for the Seahawks, but uh, I don't know. I'm really sitting on the fence at the minute. I can't pick one. Which way Which way do you think it's going to edge? I think the Packers actually gave the league and the Patriots a blueprint uh, to shut down the Seahawks uh, because they shut them down for the first three quarters. Uh, Russell Wilson ended up throwing four interceptions in the game. If you concentrate on shutting down Lynch, that basically shuts down the offense because Russell Wilson is – fantastic for what they ask him to do. But uh, I've always had this question about Wilson. Can he lead your team back from three or four scores down? Like, I'm not talking about 16 either. I'm talking about 21, 28, 35. Can he win a shootout? He's never really had to do that with Seattle. I I don't think he can. And, see, this is setting up perfectly for Belichick because on a Saturday uh, science press conference, you could tell that he was extremely pissed off. And the Patriots always seem to have this – us against the world mentality, no matter who's in that locker room, yeah. especially from Belichick. And I think that they will, he will absolutely work this, uh, these guys into a frenzy on Sunday. And I think they'll come out, they'll absolutely lay waste to the Seahawks, which is a tough thing to do. And get Seattle behind the eight ball early and, and then take Russell Wilson completely out of it. And I, I could actually see the Patriots blowing out the Seahawks in the Super Bowl on Sunday. Yeah, I could see that happening too, but I just the, the only thing that makes me think about that is when we think back to this time last year, I was very heavily in favour of the Denver Broncos going into it. I thought the Denver Broncos would win that game convincingly. We all know what happened. It went the the complete opposite mm-hmm. way. I think uh, the thing with Belichick is you really can't guess his game plan from week to week as to what his you know his thoughts are going to be. So I think the Seahawks have so much to plan for, and you kind of you do know the Seahawks game. You know the way they're going to line up defensively. They just line up as if they're going to be better than you and. They, they go for it that way. And then offensively, as you mentioned, Russell Wilson, if you look at the majority of the success he has is off play action. And really, even in that uh, fourth quarter and then in overtime, those passes were coming to play action again because they started to get Marshawn Lynch running and he started running the read option as well. Picked up a first down with the read option in the fourth quarter when they were making that comeback. So if you can stop the run, which the Packers had done up until the fourth quarter, when I think the biggest problem of the whole game for them last week was they took the foot off the pedal and started not to pressure Wilson as much they started to not rush as many men and try to play him into coverage if you look when they when they were taking away that run and he was trying to pass it from the pocket that's when the interceptions happened and I think as you mentioned that's a kind of a blueprint for the uh, the Patriots this this week coming in the Super Bowl I think uh, by the time game comes around I'm going to be you know rooting I think for the Patriots just because of the pain the Seahawks caused me last week and my brother being a, a Patriots yeah. fan <laughs> uh, but uh, I think uh, overall I think if you're looking at the conferences I do think the NFC is a better conference than the AFC this year if you look at the teams that are in it but I think just when it comes down to the best team in each conference I think that the the, the Patriots will have a, a game plan in this one that just uh, it's hard to un- underestimate Bill Belichick and I think that he, he's going to get a, another ring here they have you know you mentioned there he's going to have the team wound up for this and ready to go and he's obviously going to be super focused on it but if you look they've lost their last two Super Bowls they appeared in he doesn't want to lose a third one in their own sure so I think they're going to be really really hungry and up for this one I think his game plan will come true in the end and plus the whole the Patriots haven't won a Super Bowl since Spygate thing has to weigh yeah. on Belichick and Brady's minds and then this whole nonsense uh, Tom Brady is one of the most fiercely competitive people probably in the world and you know he's just aching to come out and run up the score if they have opportunity to to show that, hey, 
I could throw it properly and play the ball over the yard. Watch this. And yeah, honestly, sure. if they have an opportunity, like you said, Belichick will go for the throat. If they have a chance to, they'll put up 60. Yeah, that's what they I was going to say. That's what I was going to say. He, you know, if Belichick is, you know, if he has the snake down and he has his hand around, he's going to cut the head off the snake. He's not going to give you a chance to come back in. That I think if this one's sixteen nil at the half, I think we'll see. We'll see them really try and push on the pressure. And mm. I, I do think that's the difference between Belichick and McCarthy, just in the and just coaching wise. I think I think they're both great coaches, but I think there's a lot more of a ruthless streak in uh, Bill Belichick. And maybe next season when we see the the Packers playing, I think McCarthy might be a little bit more ruthless because I think. He, 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 the Packers learned a lesson last week but uh, you mentioned there obviously that you're a, a Minnesota Vikings fan looking forward um, what, what do you think is going to happen with the Adrian Peterson situation? I think that they're set to move on the the front office at least uh, Zimmer has said all the right things saying that he wants him back and yada yada but uh, I, I think with, at his age with his cap number I, I mean once he comes back uh, week one next season, he'll play one game in 20 months. Mm-hmm. Now, Adrian, of course, is a physical beast, and we're going to leave it to him to come in in the best shape of his life. But who knows what that layover is going to be at his age, especially at his position. Uh, I do think that he has one great year left in him, except I don't think it's going to be at the Vikings. Uh, just reading the tea leaves and the interviews, comments that he's been saying, that he does seem genuinely hurt that the Vikings didn't stand by him 100% throughout the whole proceedings. And Adrian does seem like a stubborn, very proud type. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but I do feel like there's a grudge there with the Vikings. Uh, there's going to be a lot of cap space that they can save by moving on from him and also yeah. Chad Greenway as well. Really open things up to what the flexibility of extending guys like a Harrison Smith. And I think it, it's over with Adrian. I, I think Spielman will try and get some sort of pick for him. Uh, I know Dallas hasn't really – they've been balking with – DeMarco Murray so far, yeah. I, I do think that's going to be a marriage made to heaven. And Jerry give up like a third round pick for Adrian. And we'll absolutely take that at this point. But uh, as a Vikings fan, uh, I love Adrian on the field, off the field. Uh, I don't I don't agree with his actions, uh, but that's a whole nother argument. Uh, and I, I do think that it's probably going to be best for him and the team as a whole, since it's not his team anymore, it's Teddy Bridgewater's, yeah. that both sides just move on and wish both sides the best of luck. Yeah, I think it's a, a crossroads for the team and for him. And I think, you know, just with what's going on, it's very hard for them to take him back. I think it's easier for the organization if he's not there, not because of his playing ability, but because of just the, the maybe the political correctness. And I, I know it's just a, it's a delicate situation, but I do think you mentioned there, you mentioned the Cowboys. I think if I had to put a lot of money down now, I would say that he's going to end up playing for the Dallas Cowboys next season. But it's a key moment for the organization as well because you mentioned Teddy Bridgewater and I, I was very impressed with him particularly mm-hmm. in the last three or four games of the season. And I think, you know, obviously with Peterson and you, you want to have a good running back, but with Peterson you, and you said, you know, your whole roundabout of quarterbacks going through there in the last few years, you were a running team and now you have the opportunity to become, obviously you can still run the ball, but you have the opportunity to become a more passing team. And I think with Bridgewater, you know, you're set up there to maybe obviously let him go with letting Peterson go and, turning the, the, the style of the team maybe around a little bit. So I'm looking forward to seeing what happens, but I do think I think Peterson ends up uh, with Jerry down in Jerry World in Dallas. Yeah, it seems like a foregone conclusion. And you're talking about Teddy, the last five weeks of the year, not to be my Vikings high horse. Uh, he was a top five quarterback in the league, and this is all with a decimated offensive line, Matt Asiata at running back, and uh, who knows XYZ at wide receiver. So yeah. he did all that without a ton of talent around him. I don't think we really need Adrian. We're not going to have Adrian uh, in two years down the line if he stays next year anyways. Yeah. So may as well cut the cord, completely move on. Zimmer and Teddy's team, let's go. Yeah, no, I, I definitely agree with you there. And I think you have, you have found an exciting quarterback talent. I think going into the draft, I thought he was the best quarterback in the in the class. We know what happened at his pro day and seems to be just a once-off. He, he, he looked very impressive. And I remember back to the game against the, the Detroit Lions that he's lost uh, at the very end of the season. And, you know, he's led it quite comfortably tried it. Very, very unlucky in that one. I thought, you know, he showed some good poise in the pocket there because we know how good their off or their defense was this season. So I think he's a he's a found a quarterback for the next five or ten years anyway. You know, it's easy to say that now it could all fall apart. We talked about RG three after his first season and it's just uh as a Packers fan I like to keep a keen eye on all the all the teams in that division and although I think the Packers are still gonna be around, I think the, the Vikings are definitely a team treading on the way up. 
All right, Colm. So we got to get out the field, so let's get to the three and out. List of three quick-fire questions to bring us on home and victory formation. Are you ready, sir? Yes, I am. All right, first one, who has been the biggest influence in your writing and podcasting career? Well, I don't know. It's hard to pick an influence, but I mentioned back when Ross Tucker was at ESPN, uh, I've had him on the podcast a number of times, and I have said it to him that it was down to listen to his podcasts and uh, the stuff that he used to talk about that I thought, you know, try and get more information out to the, the UK and Irish listeners. So <clears throat> I would say that uh, maybe Ross Tucker <laughs> would be uh, would be an influence on why I got into podcasting, but since then, uh, I'm not I'm not quite sure after that. Uh, it's crazy. He's got like 17 different podcasts. He's got more yeah. podcasts than I do, which is kind of impressive. Uh, <laughs> what's one piece of advice that you give to someone who would want to follow in your steps, who would want to start a podcast, start a website for a, a game that's afar? Yeah, it's, there is, there's been quite a few people in Ireland and the UK who have actually got in touch with me over time, and a few of them have started up their own podcasts and so on. But, you know, it's uh, the most important thing is to make sure that you have fun at it. I think if you're not having fun at it, you're not going to enjoy it, then you're not going to keep trying to put in the effort. I think if you like it, you'll put in the effort, and it has to be something that you're you're very interested in. But uh, definitely, the, I would say the, the key thing with everything in life is really to, to make sure you enjoy it and have fun. And so far, so good for us here at Overtime Ireland. Uh, what's a book recommendation? We, we love to read here on Football Convos. What's one that's uh, on your shelf? I don't know if it's been recommended uh, on your show, but uh, I went with a football book that I read recently. I mentioned when I was in San Diego, I actually bought this book, and I read it on the plane flight home. And uh, it's uh, Take Your Eye Off the Ball by Pat Kerwin. He used to work oh, yeah. for CBS, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. Have you read that one yourself? Yeah, yeah, it's good stuff. I, I got it on Kindle. Yeah, I think uh, it's. I, I, I recommend it to a lot of people that would follow us on Twitter or listen to the podcast because with some you get new people coming in watching the game, maybe they, they don't understand everything. And, you know, I thought he broke the things down as to what to watch as defensive formations, offensive formations, and just really what's going on in the game. You know, no matter if you're a, a hardcore football fan or you're just getting into it, there's definitely key bits to, to take away from it. I thought I would, that's a book I would definitely recommend. Yeah, highly recommend myself. Uh, what's next for you? What should the good people be excited about from Overtime Ireland? Well, uh, hopefully we'll be going through the off-season one podcast a week anyway and uh, getting on some former players. And that we like to. And the, and the off-season's a great time to try and go a bit more in-depth with, uh, like the stuff you've done with the, the, the guests you've had on, talking about their careers, talking about you know their plans or what they've done. Say now the Super Bowl's coming up, we'd like to try and get on some people to talk about maybe one in a Super Bowl before and things like that there. So you try and break down more stuff because there's no football really to talk about. Um, obviously then there's just the, the Super Bowl coming up this weekend. We're just trying to grow things step by step and day by day and taking it quite easily. As I mentioned, it's more of a hobby. We both have jobs. You're trying to grow it all the time. And uh, we have a competition coming up this weekend, giving away a, a Super Bowl 49 game ball with mm -hmm. a, a partner of ours at uh, Football America UK. And uh, so anyone that's listened to the show um, wants to give us a follow, wants to check out what we do. If you follow Overtime Ireland this week, and the competition will be going on uh, Friday and Saturday for a Super Bowl game ball. No, no charge to enter. Just enter and re uh, follow and retweet the, the, the tweet, which will be going out probably Friday and Saturday, and uh, you can have a chance to win that ball. But hopefully some of the people listening uh, maybe want to hear what some Irish guys have to say about the NFL. We do try to uh, take it as seriously as possible, and we do give you two shows a week to try and get you through your week if you're going to work or so on or so forth, trying to get a bit more information into it. And uh, hopefully we'll, we'll keep growing, and uh, in a few years' time maybe we'll be a voice here for uh, Ireland and the UK and the, and the NFL world as we try and develop forward. Oh, very cool. Hey, especially when you guys eventually get a London NFL team, you can be the premier voice of it. <laughs> Yeah, uh, hopefully. Uh, well, you know, that's the thing as well. When we started up, I mentioned different reasons for starting up. When you start up, the, uh, you think maybe long term that the, the t there could be a team. I, I don't think it's the right move for the NFL. Uh, don't uh, I don't think so either, actually. I, I think it's a better format they have at the minute, having three or four games a year uh, and, you know, getting t people to go. Because I know if there was a franchise, I'm not going to change from supporting the Packers to supporting the London franchise. But I'm quite happy. London like, Jaguars, come on. Yeah. Last year I went over to the, the Lions game against the Falcons. I've been to one game over the last few years each year, and then I've been to a game in the States as well. So, you know, I'm not going to keep traveling over to four games a year, but it's definitely nice to, to get over to a game, a game or two each season. And uh, maybe when the when there's more and more people putting their eyes on the London games, we've seen now there's going to be the three games in the, the early slot in the, in the U.S. So there'll be more of a focus maybe in the next few years on you know, the people providing content and that over here as well. So we'll see how it goes. We're not going to try and take over the world, but uh, we'll, uh, hopefully some people will enjoy listening to, us, listening to us and reading us along the way. 
Now, what's your Super Bowl watching plan? Because that kicks off probably about midnight your time, correct? Yeah, it'll be around uh, half 11. Uh, you know, so, you know, the, the pubs in here, they're meant to close at uh, half 11 on a Sunday night, but there'll mm-hmm. be some of them that'll have kind of lock in. So, you know, that, that's a, it's a major time of the year for new people getting into the game over here because people in Ireland and England, uh, unfortunately, uh, it's a reputation. They do like to have a party and do like to drink. So, there are going to be a lot of people, hopefully, this weekend. could be their, their first glimpse into American football and watching the game. So it's going to start around uh, half 11. We'll be watching it in one, of the, in one of the club kind of pubs, sports bars around here. And uh, hopefully we'll get a good gathering. We had a, a great gathering last year, and it's been great the last few years with more and more interest. And uh, hopefully it's going, to be, it's going to be a lot of fun, but it's going to be, going to be a late one. We'll be watching it until around uh, half four in the morning. So no, no different, really, to a, a regular Sunday night when we watch Sunday night football. Uh, so we have a lot of late nights here. We're well used to it at this stage. All right, so you're watching the Super Bowl starting at 11.30 at night in an actual Irish pub instead of, like, all the, the fake Irish pubs that they have over here. I'm, I'm pretty yeah. jealous, not going to lie. <laughs> Yeah, but um, you just uh, you'll have to come for a, a week's vacation or something to this time zone and see what it's like. People people think that you know people over here maybe don't know as much about the game, but when you when you have a dedication to getting up at two o'clock in the morning for Monday night football or getting up for Thursday night football at you know two o'clock in the morning, you have to you have to start to realize that you're quite serious about what you're watching and you try and get as much information as you can. So it it is tough in that perspective. I did enjoy when I was over in San Diego watching a couple of games over the I was away for two weeks watching the games. A regular hour, but uh, mm. unfortunately, that's just uh, part of where we live. Uh, absolutely, uh, Calm Kelly. Uh, get all of their stuff at OvertimeIreland.com. The podcast, all the writing stuff, and a lot of recipes as well. I like the smoked salmon game day wheels. <laughs> uh, I'm definitely going to try that out. Uh, one of Doc's recipes. Uh, follow him on Twitter at Overtime Ireland. All of this info will be on our football convos show page. But uh, Calm, time flew by. Uh, it was fantastic to talk to you. Thanks for coming on football convos. Been an absolute pleasure, and I uh, look forward to talking to you again. Thanks for listening to Football Convos. For more daily football conversations, visit footballconvos.com or visit us at iTunes. <laughs>